40inbox.com here. So we're going to be reacting to... Uh, I ended up marrying my sugar daddy in 16 other sugar baby confessions to let you in on the world of transactional dating. Now, I thought this would be kind of like interesting to kind of like cover and react to because we talk about money here. And apparently this is more common than most people even know. So one traditionally taboo topic that's been coming up a lot more is adult work and how it can be seen as empowering for some. Specifically, a lot of people have been sharing their experiences as sugar babies, which can be defined as, according to Urban Dictionary, a young female or male who is financially pampered or cared for by a sugar daddy or a sugar mama in exchange for companionship. In quotations, you know. So out of curiosity, according to BuzzFeed, they asked former and current sugar babies of the BuzzFeed community to share their experiences with them. So without further ado, let's get into it. So number one, I am a professional sugar baby and have seven different simultaneous sugar daddies right now. I love learning about all different professions, doctor, lawyer, Hollywood director, investment, banker, etc., and trying out new hobbies, golf, sailing, fly fishing, etc. From my diverse collection of daddies, it opened up my road to so many new experiences, cultures, and ways of life. Number two, aside from the adult stuff that their ex-wives never would perform on them, most sugar daddies think of me as their personal therapist and spend lots of time talking about their lives, problems, dreams, etc. and truly enjoy having someone really listen to what they want to express. They also ask for feedback and advice too, which makes me feel valued and wise. Number three, most of my sugar daddies have really crazy work schedules, which is how they became so financially successful in the first place. So normal methods of dating are too time-consuming. They don't have time to text, call a rural girlfriend every single day. So this transactional arrangement lets them contact you as frequently or infrequently as they want to without the girl being offended or neglected. There is a lot of flexibility in this type of dating and a lot of standard courtship etiquette is not required. Number four, transactional arrangements are very straightforward and all the cards are on the table. There's no beating around the bush or uncertainty. The sugar daddy is guaranteed a goodnight kiss and probably more and the sugar baby will get a fancy dinner, vacation, tuition, etc. It's refreshing how black and white it all becomes. Number five, once someone reached out to me asking if I was interested in being his sugar baby, it was my dad. That is uh, creepy. Number six, a couple college friends and I were a couple weeks into lockdown and bored out of our minds, so we made seeking arrangements accounts just to see what would happen. Lockdown felt like a safety net that gave us an excuse to not meet up with anyone. I spoke to some genuinely lovely men who really were just lonely. I was sent money to help with expenses in a designer bag. I also spoke to some horrible twisted men who clearly had an unhealthy relationship with power and adult stuff who felt entitled to my body and my time. Being a sugar baby could have could be very rewarding for the right person, but you have to be careful and stand up for yourself if you're going to meet up with anyone have a multi-layered safety plan in place and always trust your gut. Number seven, when I was 19, I had a sugar daddy. I was in college and needed to pay loans. This man, who was like 68 or something, had reached out to me and I jokingly replied, I am now 32 and we are married. Number eight, it started out seeming like innocent and fun and a way to make a quick buck. The shopping and trips were exciting for someone that grew up poor. It made me feel powerful to be sought after and have men willing to pay to be with me at first. By the end, it left me with much 
lower self-esteem in myself as a person, and unhealthy beliefs about men in relationships. Beliefs like adult stuff is transactional. Adult stuff is an obligation. Men only want you for your looks, youth, and women lose value as they age. And men will cheat, leave their wives as they age for someone younger, etc. Once you've seen how many men are not attracted to women their own age and are willing to cheat on their wives of decades, like it's nothing, it loses all glamorous appeal. Now that I think is more of like a personal experience type of thing. Because there's guys that probably would want a more long-term thing. There's guys that would probably want a more short-term thing. People tend to have different life experiences to where they end up feeling jaded in some way, shape, or form. So that could be very uh, point of view in a sense, right? Number nine, I'm currently working as a sugar baby to help with college. Some experiences haven't been so good. With the men I work with pushing boundaries and doing things they didn't have permission to do and so on, but some of it isn't so bad. I charge by the hour for my company, no adult stuff, and it's really helped me pay for textbooks and stuff. One of my clients is getting emotionally attached, though. Last time we met, he offered me in order an all-expense-paid trip to Vegas upon realizing I'm too young to gamble legally. He changed the offer to a cruise and finished off with a house i didn't accept because i don't trust him that much but still look no offense if i was a girl and i wasn't even old enough to gamble i would take that house and sell it so quick for some easy money number 10 I joined a few sugar baby websites last year simply because I wanted to marry a wealthy man and the sites provided the dating pool where I could find one. I want to be a stay-at-home mom and my city is very expensive so you pretty much need to be wealthy in order to raise a family on a single income. I went on dozens of dates with men ages 26 to 50 and my takeaways are this. Successful men who are self-made are usually the most interesting and well-rounded. 11. Any financial benefit was far outweighed by the risk and damage to my emotional self and beliefs about relationships. It's been incredibly hard trying to believe I'm worth more than my looks and body and as I've gotten older, left me with a fear of aging as a woman. I regret doing it and I wish I had older people in my life looking out for my best long-term interest, not just trying to F me. Number 12. Most of the sugar daddies I've met are just busy and want the uh, companionship of a relationship without all the responsibilities of being a boyfriend. Many of them actually do want a wife, but one who admires them and is pleasant and submissive. They often complain about having bad experience with gold diggers. Go figure. 13. Like regular dating, you go through plenty of first dates before you find a good sugar daddy who matches with you. My rule was that I had to chat with the sugar daddy online first and we would have one casual date over a drink with no expectations. I learned quickly that I had to stand up for myself and be blunt about my financial goals. Eventually, I met a guy who I clicked with and from our very first date I was crushing hard. Due to work, he didn't have time for a regular relationship, and I certainly didn't want a boyfriend hanging around. He'd have his driver come pick me up, and we would go for cocktails, then back to his five-star hotel room. So on our first day, we had two bottles of Cristal. I think that's how you pronounce it. Cristal? 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 Which cost more than my monthly rent. We dated for more than a year, and after several months, I let him know the gifts and money weren't necessary, I would have dated him without any of that. Sadly, the relationship came to an end when I moved countries, but we still remain in touch and in lust. Now, this seems like almost like an like idealistic kind of like situation for females to go through this uh, process, which, just like the other one, be careful because everyone has you know their own personal experiences and. Anytime you're like doing something like very transactional in this type of situation, it's just always better to be safe. Number 14, there are men who get off on being the powerful figure who have control over you. 
I've been asked to peg, poop on men's chests, pee on them, do CBT, whatever the hell that is, none of which I've actually done. There were a lot of learning moments along the way, but honestly, I prefer this kind of dating because it is very explicit from the first message. It's taught me to be very clear what my boundaries are as well as what I like and what I'm looking for. I've been in a relationship with my current sugar daddy for the past two years and it's such a fulfilling connection. I really cannot imagine dating without getting paid at this point. Get me to leave my house and take a chance on a man without even getting compensated for my time? LOL, absolutely not. <laughs> I gotta say, this is this is probably the funniest thing I've seen so far. Right here, this, this statement, right? I really cannot imagine dating without getting paid at this point. That is such a perfect statement. 15. I looked into doing it a few months ago and found that a lot of men were actually pretty young. I know the stigma is that sugar daddies are only old rich men, but I was approached by quite a few younger guys and honestly, they were all by far nicer, more honest, upfront, and chivalrous than any man I've met on a regular dating yet. And you gotta think about it too. By the way, you hear like a husky drinking some water. But uh, you got to understand too, right? Like the individuals that are probably on here, if they're young and very wealthy to the point where that they can afford to basically pay someone to date them, they know exactly what they want and they're going to be probably very open about it, straightforward, and not really be disrespectful in the sense, right? Because they're basically like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Do you fit it? In a sense, right? And of course, if you know it fits, they're probably going to be very cordial in the situation. But obviously, we've seen other things like where some of the other people had very bad experiences, right? And the way that I could probably take from that is that these younger guys who are doing these sugar daddy situations and sugar baby situations are probably so young and they've been working so hard right that they haven't had any amount of time to really ever feel jaded right to the opposite gender so now they just like are very young individuals who worked extremely hard for a lot of their money and now they have a little bit extra time to be able to hang out with someone so that's probably like the ideal ideal situation where they're actually young don't really have a lot of experience in the sense of like dating because they've been so focused on working and growing their business or whatever. And now they're at a point where they have just that slight opportunity or opening to be able to date someone. Number 16, I had a thing with a guy in his late 50s when I was in my early 30s. It lasted a few years. He paid for everything. Fancy dinners, luxury hotels, designer clothes. I honestly had a blast as well as the absolute best adult whoopee of my life. He liked it if I looked a certain way. He liked me in good lingerie, a full face of makeup, heels, and a classic black dress, none of which I had in my wardrobe at the time. I was a stressed out mom of two with a husband who was providing more than enough money but none of the other stuff. Now he knew about my sugar daddy arrangement and was fine with it. I loved having a reason to dress up, and believe me, when I did dress up for him, the power trip was amazing. He was absolutely putty in my hands. Don't assume the men always have all the power in these relationships. If you go into it knowing what to expect and what the boundaries are, you can make them work extremely well for you. 17. And lastly, my favorite sugar daddy I ever had Never asked for more than companionship and my cooking skills. He was a sweetheart and we had a standing regular Wednesday evening date for a two-hour block. He would ask me on Monday what I was making for dinner and he would have all the ingredients ready for me as well as a fun new kitchen gadget. We would chat about his work week and advice we both needed while I cooked dinner for him. We would eat and he would help me wash the dishes at the end. Then he would hug me and hand me my envelope of $800 cash and tell me he'd see me the next week. 
He was a total gentleman and just missed out having a mother figure in his life growing up. He wanted the traditional woman in the kitchen in a home-cooked meal experience and that was it from me. I love being able to have a positive impact on his life. I've had many successful relationships since him that have been mutually beneficial, but I always remember his generosity and sweet, simple needs of nurturing that I was able to fulfill for him. It's not always about being an arm charm for an older guy. So do you have a sugar baby experience you want to share? Actually, you know what? If you end up stumbling upon this episode for whatever reason, feel free to give your own experience if you know someone or if you personally have a sugar baby experience. Because that does, I think this is pretty like, an, like a pretty interesting situation, right? Because this obviously deals with money, but there's a whole hoop of emotional side effects potentially from doing these sort of things. But either way, if you're going to engage in this, and if it's even legal, I don't even know if this is legal, probably not, but if it is legal, if you do engage in it, if you're a guy who ends up like spending money like this or a lady who's spending money like this, make sure to do it when you're debt-free so that you're not ending up hurting yourself financially just to provide money for another person for this tor- like this sort of experience, right? And if you want to learn how to get out of debt, go to 40inbox.com.